I am Bill Cortright with Living Right with Bill Cortright. And this is the Stress Mastery Podcast, where we take you from the science to the spirituality of stress mastery. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Stress Mastery Podcast. I am your host, Bill Cortright. This week, our topic is what for? In today's Setup Sunday, I am discussing the power of the ask. So we're going to talk today about the different situations where the ask is very powerful. The question of what for allows us to slow down to connect to the why. And is this connection that sets the spark and has the ability to move us out of desire, to move us away from magnetic desire into volition. This is what allows us to get out of the valley and build momentum on the mountain. Asking why questions can help you understand yourself better, but it's also powerful in creating a deeper connection and understanding to others. When I talk about the ask, It's powerful in several different ways. The ask is powerful, but when asking another why or what for, this can come across as accusatory, accusatory, accusatory. I'm going to get that word. (laughs) I'm accusing them of something or like you're interrogating them. That's a better way to put it. And when you do this and you ask them, you know, what for or why, it activates a conflict and this moves them into defend and attack. And when this happens, they go into deaf effect. The moment they're in deaf effect, they're no longer going to be able to get anything out of them. They're going to go into the reality and they're going to defend whatever you activated. Now, if we look at this and we go deep into the ask, asking ourselves first, If we ask ourselves the question, what for or why, this is a powerful ask. This can lead to several things. It can lead to excessive introspection and activate avoidance and mid red zone energy of fear because you're overthinking it. Now, it also, when we ask ourselves and we use the ask why or what for, this can also move us to slow down and move into the process. And this helps us to create the still point. And then we can ask the ego, why or what for? This is actually a very powerful practice. The key in this practice is not to let the ego take over. The key is to become the witness, which puts you in a state of deep awareness. I use this particular practice a lot. I'm kind of famous for talking to my ego, Barry, and getting caught for it. I've been caught in public. I've been caught at home. Linda likes to make fun of me, as does David and the rest of the family, but it really does work. So let's say you're you're angry, right? My ego's name is Barry. I can ask him, Barry, why are you so mad? Now, when you ask that question, you then want to become still and witness what comes next. What is the story behind the conflict activated? Well, Barry might say, I'm angry because so-and-so didn't do what they were supposed to do. Or I'm angry because I don't feel appreciated. You could then be still and I can ask Barry, why don't you feel appreciated? because I do everything and no one does anything for me. You see, this is practice that's very powerful. And you use this practice and follow it in the process. And then you use the let go technique. This is how you change the over the identity. You release the old identity by activated programs. So if you're activated in one of the red zone energies in one of the states, whether it's low red zone, mid red zone, or high red zone, it's always being activated from the programmed reality. Something is happening in the environment 
in your reality that doesn't match your programming. And when you use this what for and you use the power of the ask or the why, the power of the ask, what you're doing is you are releasing the energy for the activated program. Now, a program to stay and remain as part of the identity, to stay and remain in the cage mind, in the subconscious mind, it needs to be fed. It's like a parasite that needs energy. And when you are letting go, you are allowing the process. The process is when you rest and your center, your heart, and then you relax. This is where you have the still point and your witness and you release and you're letting the energy flow through and then you respond. What's the response? You're allowing the energy to flow. You're not allowing the ego to take conscious mind control and put that energy into a story, into reaction. When you do this, you're actually releasing the program that was activated. This is a powerful practice you have to slow down and do. This is where the power of the ask comes in. So that power of the ask can be connected to something you want to do also. So for instance, let's say you want to lose weight and you want to go on a diet to lose weight. You can ask the question, what for? And really, it's a good question. Oh, I want to look sexy, or I want to be liked, or I want to show those people who have been making fun of me about my weight, or I want to be healthy. You see, this creates awareness of the, the why. If that why is connected to desire, remember desire is the base energy of the ego in the four wants. And if it's connected to the one of approval, in other words, it's connected to that you need to have this to be liked, you need to be seen, or the want to belong, you need to be part of something, well, that's a magnetic desire. And when that's connected to there, it's going to set you up to fail. Now, if it's connected to something higher, uh, I want to be healthy, then the awareness creates a strong why. The why must be connected to the heart, the creation mind, versus the connection of the want to the head and magnetic desire. So now, Let's examine the power of the ask through asking for what you want. See, when we go through higher goal setting process, which is what I'm leading up to as we come to the end of the year, we are going to set our goals. The first step of the higher goal setting process is to activate the wants. There's a lot of wants that we hold in our subconscious mind. We are always getting bombarded through media, through social media, through television, through our friends, through what we're supposed to do through our culture on what we should want. But what's interesting is this. When you ask most people what they want in their life, they will answer, I don't know. Yet so many people have all these different wants, right? But the true want, they don't know. And what holds many people back from accomplishing what they want is they don't know what they want. And this is part of the process is when you go through the wants and you have this list of wants in all five life categories, career, finance, health, relationship, personal and spiritual development. You also ask what you want in experiences and what you want in anything you want to attain, right? And then you start to weed through them and you, you ask yourself, why do I want this? And you may discover, in fact, I know you'll discover that you won't want it. You want it because so-and-so has it. You want it because you think it'll make you happy. You want it because you think it makes you look successful. All of that is magnetic desire. And so that's one way of looking at it, the wants, and using the ask to see, is this something I really want? Or is this something I believe I need to have? Or do I believe this will make me happy? Is there an attachment to the want? 
Now, the other thing when we talk about ask, the ask, what we're talking about today is what holds many people back from accomplishing what they want in life is they're afraid to ask for what they need. See, the ego's fear program uses those five resistances. Well, the ego's fear program uses the intellectual resistance. This creates a fear of being told no. And this activates the fear energy of embarrassment. So as children, we are very bold. We will ask for what we want all day long. We'll ask what I want. Can I have this, mom? Can I have this, dad? We are bold, asking for what we want. No fear. But as an adult, we don't ask. We don't ask for help. We don't ask for a raise. We don't ask for a date. We don't ask for a deal. Instead, we complain about what we don't have. Now, the other reason we fail to ask for what we want is we feel guilty. We feel selfish. Another program we got as a small child. We have low self-esteem and don't feel valued. So the outside world doesn't change. Our reality cannot change. And when this happens, our inside world begins to diminish as our self-worth begins to lower. See, the power of the ask. Number one, if you don't ask, you won't get it. Well, this sounds like common sense. Well, because it is. If you need help, ask. This actually serves you and the person you're asking for help from, as it gives them an opportunity to serve you. Number two, asking is not selfish. When you have clarity and identity-based goals, asking for something isn't selfish. The trick is to understand and have awareness of what value you're giving the other by getting what you want. This is called the win-win situation. And number, number three, reframe the no. See, rejection does not have to be a big deal. In fact, when I do sales training and I'm working with different companies and their sales staff, there's actually an algorithm that will develop in sales, no matter what you're selling. Let's say you're doing phone sales and you find this rhythm after a while, you'll find this algorithm and you you get 19 no's and one yes. And you start to see this pattern. There will be a pattern that develops. So it's very simple. If you want to get three sales a day, you want three sales, you must make 60 calls. But If you don't know how this all works and you're in fear of getting a no and you have the fear of being rejected, you won't make the calls you need to make the sales. And you will live in that mid-red zone fear energy in avoidance and procrastination. This happens to sales teams all the time. And number four, through executing the ask, you increase your inner value. See, by having the ability to ask others, this increases your self-worth and your self-esteem. And this sets a new self-image. And the identity shifts, and this changes your perception, your reality. It's having confidence. It's self-confidence to ask, to know that you're worthy of receiving. You have to be able to ask If you feel like you need to ask for something, but you're so afraid to get a no, you will never create a shift from the programmed identity to the self-authored identity. And number five, through asking for what you want, you open the door to more opportunities. This is a fact. We build our reality through vibration. If we're not asking for what we want, if we're not going out there and really asking for things, then what happens is we live in a lower vibration of fear. To ask for what you want, you have to be in a state of expansion because you must be in that base energy of courage. This 
is the energy of attraction. This is how we get what we want. So yes, you have to know what you want, but then you have to learn to ask for exactly what you need to accomplish what you want. Now, the what for and the power of the ask. One, asking builds our knowledge, right? When people act like they know everything, that is fear. That is ego. See, we always want to pretend we know everything. And the challenge is we don't want to look stupid. And so asking builds our knowledge. If you don't know something, ask. And it's a powerful tool. The smartest people, the most intelligent people, the most successful people ask when they don't know something. It builds our knowledge. Number two, asking teaches us about people. When you ask somebody for something, you will learn a lot about them. You will learn a lot of people will say yes when you ask them for something because they want approval, but they never come through. So they don't really do what they say they're going to do because they're saying yes, because they want you to like them. You will learn more about people by just asking them. It teaches you all about them because behavior is the tell. Number three. Asking engages and creates connection. So we never, if we can't ask for or ask somebody for something or ask for directions, Linda was teasing me the other day. She goes, why is it that men won't ask for directions? I go, because we have Siri and we don't need to anymore. It's a, because we were at a, a coffee shop in Boca and this older gentleman was looking for a bank in there and he went in, he goes, well, I'm going to go in and ask for directions. And Linda goes, well, we can Google it for you. <laughs> he was like 80 years old. And it's an ask. Asking engages the and creates connection. It creates connection between people. You know, asking them about themselves, asking people what they enjoy. That's the ask. That's how you create a strong connection. Number four, the ask. Asking keeps us on a course and guides us. See, when you're asking the right questions and you're asking the right people, and so one of the things in building something and staying on course is to ask if you're connecting, ask if the message is coming through, asking and then listening. See, what people do when they're trying to build something is they assume. They assume you know what they're talking about. You have to ask them, do you understand what I'm talking about? Or ask them, do you have any feedback? Ask them, did you hear what I was trying to uh, explain? Asking keeps us on course and it guides us to a proper action and behavior. And number five, asking develops others and this allows us to understand what uh, another needs, right? It's asking somebody if they're okay. Are you doing all right? How are you feeling? Asking, do you need any help? Asking, it allows us to really understand someone else's needs because many times people are in fear and they're in fear to ask you, but you can see, how can I help you? Can I help you with something? Asking really allows us to understand what someone else needs to help them get out of the cage mind, to get out of fear, out of that energy of restriction. So curiosity and asking questions isn't just a way of understanding the world. It's a way of changing it. Brian Grazer, A Curious Mind. So this week, our topic is asking uh, the question, what for? And on Monday with the Super Millennial, they'll talk about what for the millennials on health huddles this week. We're going to talk on the human condition. On this week's Meeting of the Minds, we're going to talk on showing up. On Connection Thursday, I'm going to dive deep into the process. On Friday, we will continue our book study, A Courage is Calling by Ryan Holiday. And we'll close the week out on Saturday, talking what for with Coach Peggy. So I hope you enjoy this setup Sunday. We're talking today on the power of the ask and how powerful it is. One of the things I want to bring out this week 
as we start heading towards goal setting is really to help people get out of a deaf effect, to get out of that deaf effect where it locks people in the cage, in their identity, in their reality. So that's what I really want to accomplish this week. And the what for is very powerful when you ask what for, because what that does is the what for creates the why. The why connects to the creation mind. The creation mind, the heart, is what sets us on our climb of the mountain. And this is what sets us in volition. That's it for today's show. Our mission here is to create a shift in the planet. You can join us on this mission by simply like, share, and subscribe. Links are right below the show. As always, until next time, stay inspired.